just as still just as difficult because Coach Mullen was saying the system doesn't change for quarterbacks. Yeah, I, I don't know that it has a dramatic impact on our preparation. Um, you know, just about every game we have in our breakdown has been with the same quarterback playing. So that's a team that, um, you know, when they're going to do, even in the games prior, you know, the first uh, three or four games of the season, they, they are running basically the same plays. So we, we, we understand on, on, the, on the board what we're going to get. And, 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 and I think the quarterback is, Locke is, he's, he's shown to be more than capable of, of uh, making plays. What do you credit Missouri's offensive struggles to? Is it the new quarterback, or what is it that has prevented him? It's, it, I, I know Missouri is saying the same thing, but you, the first thing we showed our guys, they, they have, they, they have. It must be twelve to fourteen plays that are touchdowns that either the ball is overthrown by an inch, the receiver had it in the end zone and hit the ground, and, and it kind of rolls out. Um, they're, the the fir first three plays of the game against Florida, they're behind Florida's secondary for a touchdown, and both guys step out of bounds. I mean, the guy has the ball running for a touchdown with no no defender between him and the end zone, and both guys just run out and step out of bounds. <laughs> so there's been a lot of bizarre plays like that, um, that the more they happen, the more obviously it affects the team's confidence, and they're, they're, I'm sure they're certainly tired of hearing that. But what we showed our guys, because the first thing we, we knew that they would talk about is the, the run without touchdowns, we showed them what we call 14 touchdowns that they had scored that just for one reason or another, that, that on the chalkboard, what the offense did to the defense, that they, they were behind the defense and it was a touchdown on the chalkboard. It just didn't turn out to be a touchdown. So we know that for us to have any chance of success, we can't let those things happen because the odds are that the, their level of execution is going to match and then those things will start becoming big plays from down the road. They, they've got good coaches, they have good players, and they know what they're doing. I know you said in the past that the defense in your scheme focuses in on the run game first. So I guess how often would you scheme or would the quarterback matter in this case? Obviously, they, they switched quarterbacks, but what when in your scenarios would it matter? Hey, you know what? They switched a quarterback. That's going to then affect our scheme. Well, it would, it would depend if the, if the quarterbacks had dramatically different skill sets okay. where one was, was much more of a runner than a thrower and the other one was, was more of a, of a stationary guy. Um, if, if they changed, you know, some teams will, will change personalities if they have different quarterbacks. Or, um, and then, obviously, if you're playing a quarterback who might be so superior at doing one thing that you may have to change some things to try to take that away, and, and, and that might affect the way you play the run. But, but in college football in this day and age, you know, the run game is still every quarterback's best friend. And, you know, you've heard it a million times, but that doesn't make it untrue, is that you're still trying to make a team one-dimensional. Um, and they're aware of that, and they've got to try new things to try and get the running game going, and we've got to try new things to get it stopped. The last couple of few games, you've been able to run the, the four two five look a little bit more. And how much is that due to the progression of those young safeties back there? I would say it's it's half due to, to those guys getting more comfortable and being able to take more reps on the field, and then also just half due to the offenses that we've been playing. You know, we've really gone three straight weeks in Missouri. Will be four of playing um, teams that that that, that um, originate in a lot of four wide receiver sets. Um, so a lot of spread sets, we have a chance to get the most speed we can on the field and try and get you know our better pass defenders out there. So, but but it doesn't matter on the chalkboard like if if the guys can't make the plays inside. So it, again, having a guy like uh, Peters and McLaurin and of course Brandon Bryant, their development has been crucial to our success in the last three weeks. Talk about, talk about development. Uh, talk about Corey Thomas, and not just Corey Thomas, but the, the entire the depth at D line and, and what you see from those guys now. Eight games into a season that you know may have been concerned about coming into the season, but now eight games in. Yeah, they're coming. You know, it's always it's always a slow process, and, there, and there's it's like grades one through twelve. There's there's small graduations where they can go from a guy that's really hard for them to almost take a snap in a game because they just they're, they're they they either can't get their assignments right or they're just so in all they just they just play slow. When you don't know what you're doing, you play slow. Um, then they get to a guy that can play a couple snaps and go in there and, and execute, you know, at a, at a minimum level, and then they get a chance to get in there and actually do things to where they can make a play, and and that usually lags the same exact development of practice, you know, usually they, they kind of do the same thing in practice, and then finally when they become competent in practice and they're starting to be able to do things in practice, you know, then a few weeks later comes in games. So those guys, um, they have been important. We need them especially this time of year because. You know, everybody's getting a little bit banged up, and you got to be able to share the reps uh, more and more. So, uh, you know, Braxton Williams, I thought it had, it had his best week of practice, I think, going into the game this past week. And then, of course, the fun play of Corey getting the interception. You know, just that's the type of thing that just keeps, you know, getting those guys and, and just letting them know to, to trust Coach Turner and just keep working with them because their development is, is starting to show. Hannah Burrow was one of the better running backs in the league last year. What have you seen from him on film this year? 
Well, he's, he's a, a shifty runner, you know what I mean? He's got speed when he can make plays when he gets into the open field. Um, and that's been the thing, is, 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 and that's been our thing. I think it's one of the big challenges of the game is, is keeping him bottled up, keeping him, keeping him sort of inside and, and not allowing him to, to get started on our secondary. Now, I, I think if you look at our, our game last week, we, Kentucky stopped scoring when we stopped the run. You know, early on they were having success running it. Now everybody they may they made a throw here and there, but when they can run it, then the throws really hurt you. When they can't run it, it's hard, really hard to win the game just throwing. So we really think that that he's going to be one of the that he is one of the keys um, to shutting them down because obviously, like you said, his, his resume speaks for himself.